Hello, welcome to another Clubs and Courts Golf Podcast. Luke Taylor here with Ben Curtis and Bernice. Bernice is back. I'm always happy to have Bernice here. <laughs> and you too, Ben. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me. You're always welcome. Well, it's your studio. Yeah, but it's our yeah. podcast. <laughs> I guess. You know, there's no me and team. No, there's no I and team. There's no oh me. Yeah, gosh. whatever. Okay. So we got a fun uh, guest. Uh, that's why he's not a coach anymore, huh? No, oh no, that was great. That was the Uncle Luke of uh, college tennis. So uh, just remember to subscribe, rate, and review. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. There's a little like link below. I guess that's what people do. Thumbs so, up, right? Yeah, whatever. Thumbs yeah. up. So we got a four-time national champion as a oh. player and a coach. You know of him or, or know him from his college playing days. Yeah, amateur college. Uh, I don't think pro, but yeah, um, yeah. more uh, – more college and amateur stuff. Yeah. And we've had the greatest player of all time at the college he's coaching at now. Oh yeah. John Rollins. Don't you're supposed to, we're supposed to, he was supposed to say it. Well, yet. I figured it. I'm sure he's figured it out. Well, there's now. no, I, I, <laughs> I, mean, I think John Rollins is the only pro at, uh, that's ever come from VCU. Oh, uh, there's probably been a few more. You just yeah. Had a, you Lanto. Had a, yeah. What's Rafa, that? Lanto, Rafa. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I, you know what? I, how I reached out to are him. Are you going to say? His yeah, we're so getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> hey, Hal Irwin said we were talking pure nonsense. Remember? <laughs> well, all right. We got well, it. You are. Okay. I am. <laughs> Andy Walker, head men's golf coach, Virginia Commonwealth University, the Rams, and uh, Dubline Putting. That's how yeah. we connected. Dubline Putting because we t- I took some video. Now, I don't want to say we because you don't go to professional golf tournaments. Um, and people were using it. Jim Furyk was years, using it. I think Darren Clark was using it too. Yeah. Um, there was a third person, third pro. But yeah, welcome. It, was, it must have been Hal. <laughs> Hal was using it. Hal yeah, wasn't. Was. <laughs> <laughs> so I welcome. Mean, welcome yeah, to Clubs Hill. and Corks Golf Podcast. Yeah. The Hill Mickelson uses it. And, uh, nice. you know, some other guys. But, but no, thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited. Uh, yeah Hope everything's good yeah how's virginia treating you great it's hot here man goodness <laughs> great like I'm, it's I'm, hot I'm, I'm, it's hot yeah, there i'm, I'm yeah. a phoenix dude and, and lived in in florida and and it's 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 hot here can we curse it? Oh, yeah yeah oh he, he's thrown one oh, f-bomb geez. so far between Why? the two of us he got really spirited and we weren't even drinking either yeah oh yeah i forgot to mention brought to you by keenan wines yeah sorry about that but yeah, so it is. It's a different heat, isn't it? I mean, obviously, Phoenix is just that very dry. Uh, did you you think now California? It's, it never really got super hot where you guys were. No, no, it wasn't. Pepperdine. No, it wasn't too bad. Pepperdine, yeah. the waves, the wave. national champion, and they won a national championship this past year. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah a couple months ago. So it was, it was fun. It's fun to be a part of that again. Yeah, yeah, it's about time. So- so when you were in Phoenix, did you ever stay at Jeff Ogilvie's house? I did not. Why would yeah. I stay at another man's house? <laughs> I don't know, because he got last time he stayed there, he got where well, you couldn't uh, keep anything oh, down. I right? got super sick. Yeah. And they weren't even there. They they like he was in Australia and it was they had the tournament at Greyhawk and he let us stay there. And uh, yeah, I got I got really sick. I had to pull out of the event, flew home and it was it was not good. Yeah. So if any if Jeff Ogilvie ever invites you or anybody you know. I mean, maybe you send your enemies there. Don't stay there. He well, won't be there either. Well, we stayed there after that several times. Well, you didn't say that. Well, I don't. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. So you're at uh, you're at VCU. You just started a couple months ago, right? A couple months ago. So what's mm-hmm. the plan? Uh, play well. How about yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, really, right now, trying to get some of the guys healthy. Um, walked into a group very talented. I mean, these guys can probably the best putting team I've ever seen. I mean, these guys can roll their pill. They look like, like you, Ben. And, uh, and so, um, and, and actually some really good ball strikers. So, so it's, it's going to be fun, you know, just kind of helping them piece it together, find out how to turn some fives into fours and fours into threes. And, but, but really right now, um, you know, I just flew somebody in to, to do some assessments and find out, you know, if, if some of these injuries are chronic or acute and, 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 you know, where do we go from here to make sure that, you know, we have a healthy team to play. And that's, that's kind of the, the main thing right off the bat. 
Wow, that's. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know to follow up with anything. Yeah. Nor does he. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, if the kids aren't healthy, it's, it's, it, you know, you can't get on the road. You can't play in events and can't perform at your peak level. But uh, so, how many kids are on the team? And like, do you have a magic number that you like to keep? I know you've had, you know, you've been coaching for eight, ten years now. So, yeah. is there a good number that you would like to have that? You know, I don't know. Sometimes you walk in, there's 15 kids. Sometimes you walk in, there's six, you know, so. You know, it, it really depends. At some of the other schools, I mean, we have such good facilities here that I can have a bigger roster. We're at nine, which is a good number. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's a great number to have. Um, wish all nine of them were playing right now. But, there, you know, there's, only, there's actually only, like, really one that's probably hurt to where he can't play. The other ones are play, probably playing through a little bit of soreness and pain. But, um, you know, that I think that that kind of 10 number is, is a real sweet spot. You know, it, it's yeah. tough because you like to have the, the eight or nine. So when you are going to play another golf courses, it's easier to say, Hey, I'm going to bring two groups out then, then two three. And a half. But, yeah. Yeah. And then, and so, but, but having nine or 10 players is, is nice. And, um, you know, not everyone has to be firing at all cylinders, you know, mm-hmm. all the time. I mean, you want to have, you know, some guys that can work their way in. You don't want to be, have such a small mm-hmm. roster to where, if someone's not playing well or someone's going through some stuff, or even if it's academically or, or health wise that you're, you know, you're behind the eight ball. So um, I kind of like that, that, that 10 number has always been a pretty solid, uh, solid number to have. So when you walk in the VC, like what, like you hear it all the time, coaches leave schools and they go to a new school. Like, what's that like? What's the biggest challenge? Obviously getting known the players or is it getting to know the campus and all that? What What's the biggest challenge for you? You know, really it's, 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 trying to find out the community you know where am I going and and are these you know players or team embraced am I walking into a you know situation that I have to clean up some stuff or, or whatever it is and 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 really the reason I came here there's been the last year and a half a few you know good opportunities to leave um you know Lynn where I was at and we kind of it, it was a great place to be is down in South Florida we ran the tables um but VCU was just a great opportunity from the beginning. And, um, you know, we have a great AD. Um, Richmond is, I didn't realize as golf rich as, as it is. I mean, such great golf courses here. The only time I'd really come here was when we used to play um, the Henrico County Open right. over at Dominion, right? And I played yeah. that probably three or four times. And um, so that was all I knew. I didn't, you know, I'd heard of Kinlock, but hadn't experienced it. And obviously it's great. And Foundry and Fed Club and Country Club of Virginia and, Richmond County, there's so many good golf courses out here um, that really embrace the team. So that's the thing is now, is now once I get there, what's our access going to be? Because everyone can tell you all these golf courses are there. Don't mean they're going to let you play. Right? Yeah. 8.35 8, p.m. on a Sunday night. Yeah. Yeah. We can get to, uh, you know, and so um, that, that's kind of the stick when you go on recruiting trips. It's like they're going to take you to the best golf course in the city, but that doesn't mean you're going in there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> one there right and the so only, the only time you see it is on your recruiting trip that's right yeah believe me every, everyone uses that deal the, the good thing about here is is everywhere you go there's there's vcu alum um there's a real big affinity for vcu and probably a lot because of the success of the basketball program with this city the city shuts down when it's you know basketball time and so um a, along you know with that I think comes the, a lot of those business people and people that are going to those games are, are all golfers and members of these clubs. And so, you know, we get to kind of ride the coattail of that a little bit and, and, and carve our own niche into the community. How, how much will you, will you change, I guess, your recruiting philosophy much going from Lynn university division two, where you won a national championship to VCU, which is in the a 10 and is division one. Um, not really. Cause the, the players we had at, at, at Lynn were, you know, or, or D1 players, you know, I mean, a kid that, that played in the masters and U S open. And, you know, at, at one time, all five of my kids were probably ranked inside the top 400 wagger. Right. And you're not going to get many D1 teams that have that. <laughs> so, um, not, not really. I, I kind of found, um, a sweet spot recruiting different than when I was in Phoenix, um, in Florida that I can, I can keep that pipeline going, but what VCU is going to allow me to do is look more domestic as well. Now I have something to, to sell here. It's tough, you know, being in, in Florida at Lynn, you know, I don't care how good I can recruit or get you to play. You're not coming to play for me at Lynn 
when Florida, Florida State, Georgia Tech, and all those guys are recruiting. It's just not going to happen, right? So I had to go and really hit international really hard when they don't know the difference between a, a Clemson and a, and a Lynn. Right, they don't. Just, <laughs> right? The football team, maybe. Uh, no, they, <laughs> they don't, don't even know, know because they don't. They're, they're all different, right? Yeah, yeah they're but they're you, but fine. you could say Lynn's uh, undefeated, still undefeated, still right. Just and VCU is as well. That's a good thing. Is every place I've been, our football has never been beat. So it's yeah. you know, I think you know, maybe it just goes with the territory. But that's all. That's all my colleges I went to. Yeah, it's but undefeated but now, in football. Yeah, I, I can go, you know, I'll go head to head with a Virginia Tech or Virginia for a player here in, in the state of Virginia if it's the best right. player. And I know that I can sell, um, you know, I can sell the, the the school and I can sell the area and I can sell the golf courses and the resources and I can sell the schedule. And so, you know, it's it's so, yeah, to, to answer that short story long, um, the the recruiting will change a little bit. Mm-hmm. So going back to these injuries, <laughs> I, I, I just blown away that all these, and you hear it all the time. Mills talks about it with his guys at Kent state, you know, and yeah. obviously, you know, John, but, mm-hmm. and we were like, I'm like, why are these kids always injured? Is it the workouts? Is it the, you know, they're just so the much bars. bigger and stronger it's than the bars what, what, partying. I mean, I, you know, you didn't hear of anybody injured until they're in their forties or fifties. Now it's, it seems like it's, and like you say, is it chronic? Or is it just, is it the way they swing the club, the violent violence of it? I don't know. What's your take? My take on it, Ben, and, I, and I'm going to assume, I shouldn't make any assumptions that we probably think about this the same as everyone that's hurt works out. Yeah. And, and it's not that. Hence, it's, hence why I don't work out. Well, yeah. <laughs> as Lumpy says, you can't, you can't break or you can't no. pull fat. Can't, can't pull, <laughs> no, you can pull, no, he said you can pull a muscle, but you can't pull fat. Right. I love it. And yeah. so, so with that being said, it, it's not that we can't be bigger, stronger, or faster. You say that you have to be that. I mean, I right. got two kids that were, we were on track men yesterday and these kids are swinging at 127 play speed, Ben. Jeez. I mean, it's, you know, but it's a different game. It's, it's a different game. So we have to be bigger, stronger, faster. I brought in Carl Horn to structure how we're going to do that and stay safe and, and, it, you know, it doesn't mean we have to be doing a bunch of deadlifts and heavy weights to get stronger and faster. And, and, you know, golf is different than, than every other sport. And everyone wants to say, you know, it's two arms, two legs, and, 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 and it's an athletic move. And it, but, but golf is different. We move things different. And there's different bends and different, you know, um, things that, that go on in a golf swing that give us enough pressure, I think, on our back and our spine and different joints that if, you know, if, if Tiger got hurt working out, I'm pretty sure he had access to some of the best ever, right? Right, yeah. It means that that workouts for golf have not been done the right way. And, and, I'm, and, and I'm not, you know. I, know I totally I'm- agree with you because I think, you know, you look at Charles Howell, you know, Justin Thomas. I mean, they're not big guys, but everybody else looks like linebackers. You know, right. <laughs> Kapka to Dustin to, you know, DeChambeau and all those guys. I mean, they look like they can just. They're, they should be playing football instead of golf. And those guys are hurt all the time. And they're always hurt, right? I mean, <laughs> and but you never hear that with, you know, Justin Charles Thomas. and think Justin Thomas, yeah. right? But right. Like, how do you hurt your, your knee playing golf? We're not kicking the freaking ball. Like, yeah. how you, like, like there's, there's so many things that go on. And, and, and then I, I think as well, you've got the people that are working out are, are thinking that they actually know golf. Right. And trying to tell you how to hit golf shots. And it's like, nah, my, I think Tiger got hurt because they tried to change his move so he wouldn't get hurt. And I think yeah. his body knew how to do what he did because he did it and kicked our butt for, you know. Well, ever. you grew up with him, right? I mean, you, you're the same age and you, yep. you know, grew out, out, up out there and played against him in college. Probably. I mean, we saw him a couple of times, saw you guys a couple of times, but not, yeah. you know, obviously just being where we were, but you saw him all the time. And, you know, I actually saw someone the other day, like this chain, how his swing changed so much from 2000 to 2010. Like, it was, yeah. <laughs> and it was like three times. It wasn't just once. It was three different times. So. I mean, there's a video where he was hitting balls, I think, at Lock and Bar. And he was like 17 or 18. And that's just the most gorgeous freaking move. And it was fluid and it was free and it was athletic. <laughs> and, you know, then it got to be, but he can win with anything. It doesn't matter how many, he could play left-handed. 
yeah. 260. Well, so he putted so well that he, <laughs> he got away with a lot. I thought. <laughs> yeah. So you're uh, the second person um, that we've had on the show that was on Golf Channel's reality show, The Big Break. Never You're heard in of Ireland. Yeah. yeah. Jan Dowling was in uh where she was big break, wasn't she? Yeah, she was uh, Myrtle she, Beach. She was Myrtle, yeah, Beach, Myrtle yeah. Beach. So you went to Ireland. First time ever in Ireland. Um, that was my first time in, in Ireland. You know, Walker's yeah. a good Irish name. Can't you tell him by yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> You've got the uh, very light skin complexion, you know. You've already got <laughs> freckles and you know, you yeah. look like Rory. Uh yeah. what, so where were you in Ireland? How was that? What what was kind of uh maybe some of the head scratching things they made you do different competitions. Um, no real head scratch and stuff. I mean, it was, it, I went So most people go to before their career st- kind of starts to get started. I went when I was done playing, right. I'd already, you know, kind of done the, the, the corn fairy stuff and played around the world. And, but I went there really because I was opening up an Academy in Phoenix and you know, the guy that was my agent was like, you fool, you better go on there. There's like 10 million people watch this every week. That's free advertising for you. And and so, um, you know, so we went over there. It was uh, Ireland's way too cold, first of all. Don't want to <laughs> live there ever um, or really go back for that matter. Because they're like, you know, I, I said, what? because they don't tell you where you're going. And that's the thing is when they pick you for the show, they say kind of show up and and pack for three weeks of, you know, they said East coast spring, like weather. Well, I'm from, I'm from Phoenix. I don't know what East coast spring, like weather is like, but I didn't know that meant 30 degrees every day and raining and blowing 50. Right. So, where, um, so it was pretty miserable weather wise. Where was it? Where at the K club. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're at the K club. So it was, you know, so that was cool. I mean, you know, yeah. obviously being there and, and you know, with the Ryder cup history and, and all that stuff. Um, now you know why they have warm beer. It's a lot of hurry up and wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I will I will go out and say, um, how do I say this? Uh, PC. I was the best player on there. So um, I, I should have won the deal. And I was, we kind of had a good run. And the day that I did get booted off, I think I was, I think I had too many pints of porter. So, um, I don't know, probably trying to stay warm or whatever, but, but no, it was, it was a fun experience. And, and, you know, I still keep in contact with some of the people on there and, you know, they know how to create drama on that show. They know how to make you like, you know, talk ish to each other and, and, uh, and pull the best of that out. So, yeah, it's kind of like, uh, the bachelor, you know, they, they kind of tight cast you in, in certain roles, you know, get you, they can manipulate things. So who else was, was there They're anybody not, else on the show of note or um, you, probably, you probably know Julian um, Trudeau. He okay. played, uh, he played Curry for a year. He's been, he's been caddying, you know, since I think he's with Adam long now. Okay. And he was with, um, uh, who was he with before? Um, he's been with a couple guys, some, some, some good bags. I think he's gotten a win or two at least okay. in, um, out there. And, uh, Let's see, Mark Murphy who ended up winning it. Irish dude, really good dude, funniest person probably on the face of the earth. Um, <laughs> and then quite a few of the of the women who played. So like Mallory Blackwelder, actually Mary Julian, she played out on tour, and Nicole Smith played out on tour, and and, and you know quite a few of them. So it was it was it was pretty cool, uh, cool cast. Yeah, were you, were you able to play any of the other Irish courses? Like were you able to get up to Royal County Down or? No, we went to Royal Port Marnock. So we shot one of the days there. It blew like literally probably 80 <laughs> there. It was, it was unbelievable. And um, I mean, I think I had a 130 yard shot that I probably aimed 70 yards left of the green and hit it to like 15 feet. Right. Just and like turned it into the wind. It's still the wind. Um, and then uh, when we first got there, we played, I think it was like Carton House or something like that, which was a good, good, tough track. So, but it's hard to enjoy him when it's, raining and four degrees out right so oh yeah well one of my funnest times was we played uh waterville one year and it was blowing like 50 not not 70 or 80 but 50 yeah. and the rain would never hit the ground it just it hit everybody but <laughs> the ground but it was a lot of That's fun actually, we're we're we're... actually tiger was there and mark O'Meara and love couples and all that we all played and after doing a thing at the K club for a few days. And yeah. 
Yeah. So there's a lot Mark, of fun. That was on the show. That's where he's from. Waterville is his own course growing up. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a cool yeah. spot. I love it. I mean, that was the only time I've been on that side of the coast, but yeah, it was great. Yeah. But it's nothing. You definitely don't want to play a tournament or anything. So <laughs> you go out, you have a couple of drinks just to get yourself warm. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. It was, whew, it was yeah. tough. Yeah. But, yeah. So you're on the golf channel for a while too. Was that after before or after you were on the big break? You were the uh well, I was trained some I was, pretty good players. Yeah. Um just doing some some instruction stuff. I think it was kind of during and after and you know, trying to teach guys how to get the ball going forward most of the time. Okay. So <laughs> so, so this this that's a good just segue to the Al Luke. No, no, stay, this is stand a good, up right. Yeah, this swings. is this is a good segment then. Who is the worst? NFL or Major League Baseball player you worked with? Oh man, that's awful! You're really gonna ask me to see the word. <laughs> well, listen, we had Derek Anderson on here, and he said Cam Newton was like the worst <laughs> for his being as athletic and big, strong dude as he was. He's like he was terrible, and he flat out said he was terrible. Ah, dang, the worst man. That's I don't know. I got to think about that one. Cause they ended up being pretty decent. Those dudes like grind, like they yeah. they grind at golf. Like I feel like if I'd practice at golf like they did, I'd probably still be playing, not coaching. But um, so, well, who would be the sucks. best? Who would be the best? Because now, you know, like J.R. Smith. Now he's going to play college golf. Yeah. As you see, I'm sure yeah. you saw that. <laughs> but he, you know, he played for the Cavs and lived on the west side at Lakewood, where you're mm-hmm. going today. Yeah. But he, uh, yeah, he. Apparently he's a decent call. I don't think he's anything great, but I mean he can shoot in the seventies. Like so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, I tell you, some guys that did surprise me. Um, I, so so one of my best friends is, is Seth Joyner, and when Seth he he loves it, and I've seen him shoot you know two three four under par. But I I remember playing with 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 Jason Kidd one time, and um, I think he shot five under at the Raven. And it was it was I didn't pretty pure. Played golf, you know. Yeah, I, didn't like, know I, I know. Yeah, and, and and you wouldn't even you know it was like it wasn't a. I mean, there's five under is five under. You still got to play good, but there's some ones that don't look good. Like if I took them to another yeah. course that may be eighty six, it was pretty right. pure. He was hitting some good golf shots, but there's so many good you know players like the Allen Houston's and Ray Allen's and you know and 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 Sterling Sharps and and. You know, Joe Carter, I mean, Joe's a good player, a really yeah. good. I mean, we were playing Legacy, and after we got to work and he think he shot even or one over one day, and it was, you know, he, I mean, he had quality golf shots. It wasn't like so he it's, was just milking it around. It. So basketball, you got to be a guard, right? Football, you got to be a kicker or quarterback. No, no. To be. You see, he named Sterling Sharp, Seth Joyner. Yeah, but he's a receiver. He was say. a tight end. Seth Joyner was a linebacker. Do you want me to keep going on who else the positions? Obviously, but, you never played football. The I kicker. did. I was a fucking lineman. What did you play? Nick Saban called me up. What the other did you day play in the forties? Like, hey, come on. Would you play in the forties? Hmm? Yes, five eleven. Yeah, like one eighty five. Lou Holtz, right? Oh, he was an offensive lineman. Come on, really? <laughs> He's like five foot four and one hundred eighty pounds. <laughs> one hundred thirty pounds. Sorry. But anyway, so well, that's that's had to be fun though, right? Teaching those guys. I mean, obviously, like you said, they're very dedicated. They're, I mean, they're they're addictive, right? <laughs> those guys get addicted to it, and um, when they play now, yeah. obviously, a lot of them are retired, right, or have the time to do it. You said Joe. Well, I'd say that the toughest swing to work. With, yeah, Joe's Joe's sweet. No, no, I'd say one sweet. of the toughest no, ones. No, to work let me with, can I, I, let me just interrupt. You. Joe Carter, baby, I'm from Toronto. Joe, oh, man. Touch him, Carter. Joe, Joe Touch Carter. Joe. They that's got man. That's my guy. Who's Joe, Joe Carter. Who's Joe Carter? Jolting Joe Carter. <laughs> Put one to the left field. <laughs> running around yeah. like Hal Irwin. He was. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Proceed. Sorry. My bad. Go Blue Jays. No. Nah. Joe's, Joe's my guy, man. And and so he has a uh, like a celebrity event up there in, in Toronto every summer. And so. Just saying it, it's fun and i mean just just watching that video all the time is 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 incredible when he hits that and you know does his little jump we'll, wa- we'll watch it together series, so. we'll watch it together who, who who'd they do it at phillies phillies all right. was it phillies yeah phillies yeah was that john krupp 
No, that was he was. Uh, who was that? Who was Mitch Williams? Yeah, Mitch Williams. <laughs> so Mitch actually comes to the comes to his tournament, right? Like, <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I, you know I'm who, sure he probably still. Paid you know who comes to his tournament? Thomas Bjorn. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. He's still giving me the stare, <laughs> the Danish stare. <laughs> we, we, we went Send back to some bunker feet. shots. <laughs> oh, that's dirty, man. <laughs> uh, Thomas, you know I love you. You're out there somewhere. Yeah, he's not listening. Yeah. We have, yeah I, could, I could just see it through the microphone and yeah. stare coming at yeah. me right now. We got to get him on here. We we have to. There's a picture I have at home where it's like, I have the trophy and I'm giving the speech and then you have uh, VJ back there. He's smiling, but then Bjorn's got the, the stare down, the Danish stare, we call it. And it's, I, I laugh at it every time I see it, <laughs> but anyway, what are you going to do? I anyway. want to go back to the bunker shot. That's filthy. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> thinks he's a nice guy. Oh, oh, yeah. Asshole. Oh, just, Cold fucking, calculated. I'm just asshole. joking around. God. I remember him as the nice, Dude, I like seeing this. Stuff. That's all right. That's all right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're, we're gonna be right we'll back. We're gonna on take the bunker shot, Thomas. Yeah. yeah. There you go. We're gonna take a quick break with Andy Walker. We'll be right back. Robert Keenan Winery, located in the historic Spring Mountain District of the Napa Valley, celebrate the best round you ever had, or get over your sorrows after the snowman on number eighteen. Drown yourself in one of the. 14,000 cases per year they produce. Combining the dedication of experienced winemakers with a commitment to excellence, the Robert Keenan Winery has distinguished itself as a maker of exceptional wines in limited varietals and quantity. Wines for sipping, wines for enjoying, wines for enhancing any occasion. In the last eight vintages, 42 wines have been rated between 90 and 97 points by Robert Parker Jr., as a special thank you, use code Clubs and Corks all in uppercase and receive twenty percent off your next order with Keenan Winery. They are golfers just like me and you. All right, we're back with Andy Walker. So you were a professional player eleven years. You played various domestic and international tours. What was your favorite tour? Which I think we probably know that one. What was your least favorite tour? Yeah. Um, probably the one, the, my favorite and my least were the, they were the same because I spent the least amount of time on it was, was you know, the PJ tour. But, um, <laughs> you know, obviously that's, that's the only place that you ever want to play. I mean, you know, Benetton. I mean, every other places are fun. I probably had my most fun, honestly, though, playing uh, up in Canada just because like the group of guys that we used to travel with and, you know, I mean, we just had it. We had a great time playing up there and I could actually beat those guys and no one on, on the regular tour. But um, <laughs> the least favorite, goodness, the least favorite was whichever one's probably had the smallest checks. Right. Yeah. I, you know what? I did not enjoy playing the Hooters tour. I played there for a year. And um, what you know, year was that? What, what years? Maybe 2000 or something like that. OK, so I play no one and no two. Maybe um, maybe he didn't like I it because he didn't get the twenty percent off coupon from Hooters. You know we what? Forgot to, was, we forgot to redeem it. I guess <laughs> it, it was it was 01. I was out okay. there one as well. Um, because that was the year that was the first year I got status on buy.com. I think at that time, okay, it was was two thousand one Q school um over at Barrel Lake. So I think I played probably two thousand two thousand one a little bit. And you know, I don't know if you guys know about the history of this country, but you know, Andy going into Decatur, Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little tough. Yeah. You know, kind of like, was... like going to Ireland. Uh, no, you know what? Ireland was a little more welcoming than, yeah. than Decatur, well, Alabama. Yeah. Well, yeah. Places that to so it was, uh, you know, sometimes I really wasn't worried about like wind direction. I was kind of looking in the trees like I'm <laughs> in there right now. Yeah. You know? I went to so, school in we some, I went I we went some, to school in Arkansas for two years, so I don't know I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So where'd you go to school? Uh, Arkansas Tech, the Wonder Boys, D two. Mm-hmm. Uh, they it was funny. Uh, one school called Henderson State, which was in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, called us Redneck Tech, yeah. and yep. uh, we were in a little bit better area, Russellville, than mm-hmm. Arkadelphia, but whatever. 
It's it's not it's nice they down there, but Ken it's Duke different. Went to Henderson. What's that? I think I think Ken Duke played at at Henderson State. I don't know that name. You don't know Ken Duke. Ken Duke. Oh, Ken Duke. Oh yeah, yeah, Ken Duke. He played at Henderson State. Wow. Interesting. I, think so. yeah, I didn't know yeah. where he went. We can build ability for him. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the dub line putting pegs system. <laughs> let's do that. Yeah. So it's kind of like the telephone. I'd put a cup to a line and he'd have a cup and he'd talk. How'd you come up with that bad boy? Uh, seeing a lot of people use a single string the wrong way. <laughs> right. And not really getting anything they want. And so my thing is, is, as to be a good golfer, you got to be kind of stupid. All right. You got to be a little dumb. And so my thing was to make it so you didn't like, you couldn't mess it up. It's like dummy proof. Right. And so um, really it, it was, I wanted something that, you know, with, with, with a single line, if you like your eyes inside the ball and the ball's directly underneath it, you don't know that unless okay. you have your eyes directly over the top of it. So two lines, not only will they merge into one when your eyes are directly on the top of it, when you like your eyes slightly inside, you're going to know how much of the bottom line, because they're different colors that you do see. So like you said, some of the guys that are using it, I think I got like 70 something guys on tour using it right now. Um, and some ladies on, on tour using it as well. So like a Furek likes his eyes directly over the top of it. So he does, he only sees the black line on top. Um, Darren Clark, the same way, right? Darren's eyes were getting too far outside of it and then wondering why he was cutting this putt. So my thing was, let's not work on, you know, slowing down the carriage all the time and trying to get you to release the putter. All he's going to keep doing is releasing it left and go from cutting putts to to pulling them. So it was getting set up the right way, but getting set up the exact same way every time. And then as I started using, um, and, and I started using it a long time ago, kind of just bootleg version, making them. And then when COVID hit, um, you know, just kind of sitting there and, and I, matter of fact, it was on golf channel and they were showing, I think it was Gore or someone using it like the U S open or, or somebody was, was using it. And I said, man, why didn't everyone love that thing? And, and it worked and it was good for starting lines. It was good for path. It was good for the rise. It was good for, for, for breaking putts, especially on focusing on your starting line. It was good for aim and alignment and so many different things. And so actually made it into a, a product and you know the first actually the first day that i got them in you know i ordered like 1500 of them and uh and i gave one to darren clark and he hadn't won a tournament in nine years because he couldn't shake it in from five feet right and so um he went out and won back-to-back weeks using it and then was on golf channel talking about it and next thing you know everyone wanted to start using it and so that didn't suck that's a lot of string 1500 yeah. pieces of string yeah So uh, where do you like your eyes? Do you like them underneath, you know, slightly inside or over the ball? Like what was ideal for you? My ideal for me is right over the top of it because my tendency is kind of like DCs. I get my eyes over the top. So I kind of cut putts a little bit, holding them off. And so, um, so I like to get mine directly over the top of it, which I feel like I'm kind of sitting back a little bit and the putter swings a little more natural. So that's, that's my spot. Yeah, I'm I'm more inside. If I I was I my tendency would if I even if I got at the ball would be take it outside. So, uh, but I yeah. stood. I was I think very I tall. Your- I was I stood up to it, so I didn't have much bend in my yeah. posture either. So that was makes the stroke go more straight as well, <laughs> right? If you get bent over and a little further from the ball, it goes a little more in. You know, a little more art yeah. to it. I don't remember correctly though. You always ran tables. Uh- he always rolled it nice. Yeah. So I, I didn't realize eyes with putty was makes. a thing. Oh yeah. I you never seen somebody like the old school way you used to drop the ball between <laughs> right no. between the eyes to see where no. it would land. <laughs> we we you used know, to put yeah. we used to way. now we, you get out the mirrors and, yeah. Well we know. used to put like money and he'd roll it, but the problem is you'd have a mark right here. That's what we used to do as kids. Yeah. We're different up in Canada. Yeah, very different. Yeah. So it really so really so yeah. what I guess what what should both of you guys? What should the average putter or person that puts how 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 should they be looking at the ball? Should they be looking inside on top of it? I mean, well, I think I think well, and Andy will probably agree. The kiss of death is probably over the ball, right? <laughs> it, right, right. You know, yeah. you see some guys are six eight inches inside the ball, and they can still putt it, right? But 
It's just when you get outside the ball, it, it becomes very difficult. Definitely. And, and that's a thing with, with deadline. It'll help you find out where you're going to roll it best and then help you get there every time. And, and, and so now we go into to putter fitting. Not that, you know, my thing is more, can you line this thing up where you want it? And, you know, do you get the speed that you want when you hit these putts with putters? But as well, if you are inside a little bit, you like your eyes inside, you're probably going to have a putter that has a little more, a little more toe hang, right? right. And so you can have a little bit more swing. If you're over the top of it a little bit more, you're probably going to be conducive to using more of a face balance putter. So there's so many variables that go into hitting putts well that we don't think about all the time or, or, or players don't think about because they don't you know they don't have the technology they don't have the 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 means that that we had when we we're playing that we could measure stuff and, and and get information really quick plus they're not practicing as much as we did as well so they just go out and they, they find that putter and it's a scotty and it's on sale and i like it and it's a cool head cover and i'm gonna buy it and think that it's gonna work for me because it worked for, for you know, Jordan Spieth or somebody, right? So, right, yeah. and, and that's what uh, people do. And, and so this kind of gives you, it goes not only into to training and, 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 and measurement stuff, but, but it gives you a, uh, a repeatable place to get back to. And, and it can help you make sure that you have the right equipment and you're set up, you know, right for, you know, the way you want to. There's no way to, I mean, look at Billy Mayfair. I mean, he's made a couple of putts in his day. It looks like he's writing his name in cursive, right? Right. <laughs> right. And you got guys. And it's all how you read putts too, right? Like, as you know, you know, Ogilvy, I remember talking to him and he always, he's always looking for the ball to break right to left. (laughs) And so he always, he struggled a little bit left to right. I mean, when he (laughs) practiced, he practiced right to left, right? So it's just a little bit, it's how you see the ball going into the hole as well. So other than Tiger Woods, remember, who's the best putter you've ever seen or that you played with or? Hmm. That's a good one. Um, I mean, Faxon doesn't roll it very bad. No, uh, he rolled it. I, I tell you that the the most disappointed. I'll probably get killed for this one. But so at our our fundraisers, you know, at Pepperdine, when yeah. when Guy Berger was coaching, he'd bring some of his dad and the friends would come in during our fundraiser. And I remember, you know, Crenshaw and I was going to play with him, and I was so geeked like all night, like I get to see <laughs> this man. He rolled it so bad. <laughs> Oh. He couldn't cheat three putted like four or five times probably because he didn't care, right? But yeah, I was just sitting there like you know, it's like you know, it's like Christmas and you go into a tree and there's no there's no gifts gifts for you. <laughs> there's gifts for everyone else, and yeah. you're like, Grace, I'll just wait waiting to just see this magic out there all day. <laughs> and it was like, dude, you kind of put like that, right? So, um, it's like, what about Badley? Somebody like that? Um, I mean, he was yeah. He I mean, he rolls it great. Yeah. But, but he hit, remember he hit everything really firm, right? right? There was no die speed in his putt. And no. so for him, if you're using a dub line, he's going to use his starting lines different than I do. I die my putts in probably right. because I'm afraid of three putts. So I want to keep them close to tap in the next one. But, Same as me, you know, so, so that's, you know, again, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's incredible. I tell you what, I got a kid on our team named Charlie Kennedy, who a freshman, I haven't seen too many people we're all like him on earth. I mean, it's, it's pretty scary. It's almost like Cantley was this weekend, right? I mean, that's how this kid is pretty much every, everything inside of 12 feet. I'm just going to get to a point where I'm just going to be like, pick it up so we can, you know, keep up with the next group. So, yeah. Well, pretty <laughs> scary. Wow. <laughs> well, he's going to have a bright future then, right? <laughs> I don't know if he's one of those injured guys that you're okay. talking about, but, <laughs> you know, but hopefully, you know, he'll have a bright future. I mean, no, he, he's not. We think it. We gotta get a little speed in there, though. Okay. The problem is he does have a lot of the twelve footers, and they're not always pretty. So, but okay. you know, but he can play. He's a good player. We get we get a little speed in there to match up with that with that putt and stroke, and he'll be Watch he's gonna out. be a stud. Yeah. How, how do you guys look uh, in the A10 this year, and, and probably nationally? Um, I'll tell you in May. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> right. you know, it, it, it's a really talented team, to be honest. I mean, you know, I wasn't quite sure what I was walking into uh, so much. Um, they, this team has had some success. Um, I think some of the injuries probably slowed some of it at the end of the year. I would think that this team should be the favorites in, in the A10 um, nationally. We'll see. You know, I, it, it doesn't take it doesn't take tons to 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 win. You just gotta not throw up on yourself a lot. Right. Go out and shoot a lot of like 
one and two <laughs> unders, and, and you know, someone's going to get someone's going to get hot and shoot four or five or okay. six or something. But you don't have to. Not everyone has to go out and shoot, you know, sixty eight every day, and, and and nobody does. So it's just really getting these guys to 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 learn how to play a little bit more efficiently, right? Yeah. Hit the hit the right shots in the right spots. Understand their tendencies. Understand why, where, when, how they're going to come out. And once they kind of understand themselves, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not a real big goal setter, but, but my, my expectations of this team is, are, are pretty lofty. I want to be playing at Greyhawk in May, right? I want to see my alma mater. I'd love to see them, you know, in, in match play. So well, I would I talk enough that's... shit to them that they would. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think, you know, you hit it right on the head. I think, you know, when you watch, uh, you know, I, you know, with Mills and that, it's like they, if they don't, if they're not three or four under, then they almost give up. Right. Not that I'm saying they do, but it's almost yeah. like their attitude changes. Say, Hey, just shoot a 75 or four, <laughs> you know, we'll, it'll balance it out with one or two guys playing well. Right? right. And I think, you know, it's just like, and then they turn it into a, an 80. Right. And they just shoot themselves in the foot. And it's just really, yeah. you know, it's just, I think if you hit it, you know, just, just play your game, but you know, don't get upset if you're not 600. Cause that's what they see on TV. Right. <laughs> Obviously they see the, the low scores, but you know, hey, that's what we always drove. If we could just got, had the fifth, fourth or fifth guy on at Kent, you know, we would have, you know, we had three really good players and, and you no, know, not the other guys weren't bad. They were good players. It's just, you know, it just was consistency more than anything. Yep. Well, that was the thing when, when, you know, when we won in CAAs in, in, in 97, you know, three of us finished top 15, right? And and Jason had obviously had a chance to win individually. And I think, you know, while he finished top 10 and, and I, was, I was like out 13th or 14th or something like that. And and then our fourth guy did his job. Right. Right. He just, he, he counted enough 73s and fours and fives that if we yeah. shot 66 or 67, it didn't, it didn't, we didn't have to count an 80 ball. Right. And that, right. that'll kill you. And so, you know, now it's like, we don't have to, if we shoot a lot of two unders, if we count, you know, if you're shooting eight under a round, I mean, that's 24 down at the end of the week. I'll, I'll take my chances. If you, if you beat yeah. us with that, then, then great plan. Right. But right. I think, I think the long average is going to say that we're going to keep, you know, we're going to have chances to win and we're going to run into one. So yeah. So where's your, what's your schedule look like? What's your, uh, uh, you uh, can I, can I say something? I, I felt <laughs> like I wish I would have known you like 28 years ago. Cause you made a statement and I, and I hope you tell your kids this just in general, don't throw up on yourself. Don't throw up on yourself. That's what I got from the last couple of minute conversation. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you heard about all the great philosophy and got, don't throw <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> but that's so prevalent in college. Don't throw up on yourself. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And not, and I'm obviously meaning more mental, right? Than um, than anything. Physical. But I think throw up on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> don't shit yeah. yourself. Don't yeah, throw up on it, yourself. It'll happen. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> will, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's always gonna happen, right? I mean, that's you know, that's a term we use. Like, how's he playing? Oh man, he's back there shitting the bed right now. But yeah. but those are the rounds that that that, that help a team. So many times, right. a guy that's struggling, you know, they're going to be the throw out round, and they're four or five or six over, and you know everyone else is playing well, and you help them get it back to like two over that round. It still may be the throw out, but yeah. now they got some momentum going into that into that afternoon round, and it's so many times they shoot that 74, 66 because yeah. they were five or six over, and they didn't just just like you said, they didn't throw in the towel and just. You know, where everyone else is playing good, I'm just going to tank it this round. You can't magically go ahead and turn it on on the first hole, the next, right. you know, the next go around. It does, it's right. just not a not a restart. You, you're still riding that, that 78 you shot. So, right. um, it's momentum, so, right? So don't go up on yourself and don't go yep. big time. Big, you know, it's just yeah. ride that way when you can, like you did at Pepperdine. Right? Go ride the wave. Ride That's the wave. their names. Yep. Ride the wave. <laughs> is that was, what was your, was that what you guys said? Ride the, waves. the wave? Waves. Those the ways. No, we didn't say right the ways. We didn't really, really didn't say much. So no. I got in trouble there for like when we won, like you know, we like we threw up the dub, you know, for like the waves, and like these people were like, "Oh, he's a gang." I was like, "Come on, side, <laughs> <laughs> the west side, man." I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, west side cat. I'm a rider. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you but, go. 
So let's uh, let's finish here. Yeah. Uh, Andy, thanks for joining us. You're going to stick around for us with a couple minutes. We're going to ask you some uh, some kind of pertinent questions in the back nine section on our Patreon page. If you want to get more from us, hear more from our guests, or just I don't know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> join our uh, Patreon page, www.patreon.com backslash Clubs and Corps. It'll be somewhere in the link, whatever. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review, and uh, we'll be back next week. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Andy. Good luck. Good luck to Thanks. you. Thanks for having me, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Thank you.